Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, we are looking at carbon mod for Rust. Carbon is an alternative for Oxide. Oxide is the framework that all the plugins are running on. You can now run those same plugins on Carbon. Carbon is more lightweight and focused on performance, and it has some built-in modules that I think make it really, really powerful, especially for newer server owners. In this tutorial, we are looking at Carbon as an alternative for Oxide mainly looking at what it looks like running through the setup and what kind of options we have out of the box. If you look at what Carbon is creating, it is doing way more than that. For example, you have the Carbon client. And to make this clear, these are two totally different things. And we are not looking at the Carbon client today, but I quickly wanted to show you a video from the Carbon client. If you want more information or the Carbon client, or of course Carbon in general, I highly recommend joining the Discord and being part of the community. The Carbon client will allow for way more creative mods than we are currently able to create inside of Rust. As you can see here, it looks like we are just loading into a normal game, but you will clearly see that there are some models and things that we have never seen inside of Rust before. One of the big issues with creating maps, we had a lot of freedom creating custom maps, but everything that we created was still made with parts inside of Rust. Here you can see that we have custom models inside of Rust and also, if you know what game this represents, leave a comment down below. Let's look at one more from the Carbon client. Once again, here you can see some models that are not inside of Rust, but you will see in a little bit that this is definitely inside of the Rust engine or inside of the Rust world. This is again using Carbon client. This is separate from Carbon that we are setting up in this tutorial, but I thought this was so cool that I had to show you. For me personally, the main benefits of Carbon are the dynamic hooks, having the built-in modules and having everything in one place. I don't want to get too technical, but I quickly want to explain the dynamic hooks because I think it's one of the main things that makes Carbon so powerful. Looking at the Carbon documentation, looking on the right, we can see that there are several events that can happen. And every time this happens, this will be detected by Carbon. And the same is for Oxide. So every time a player gets revived, every time a player goes to sleep, every time a player drinks, etc. There are over 600 of these different hooks, as they are called, and plugins can use those hooks inside of their plugins. So every time someone drinks, we can make something happen. The big difference between Oxide and Carbon is that on Oxide, by default, all these hooks are loaded and running. So even if there are no plugins installed, all of these 600 hooks are firing and triggering every time it happens. This will cost server performance. And it's even triggering for things that no plugin is using. For, for Carbon, nothing is enabled by default if it doesn't have to be. Then when a new plugin gets installed, if they need a hook that is not already enabled, it will then just subscribe to that hook, basically enabling it, and then that will also start firing and triggering. Meaning, Everything is disabled if it's not being used, saving you a lot of performance that can then actually be used in places that need it. Hopefully that makes sense even if you're not a plugin developer. You install Carbon exactly the same as Umod. If you want to install Carbon on a local server, you can just download the attachment below and then unzip it inside of your Rust dedicated server folder and then restart your server and this should automatically generate all the needed files. You can also download it here for Linux I think there are some better options for Linux, either for Teradactyl or for Linux Game Server Manager. There is a egg created by Mike, or you can follow the instructions for Game Server Manager. I'm currently using GTX Gaming, and as you can see, we can install Carbon directly from our dashboard. We can see this is booting up and we now have Carbon running. I'm gonna let it do its thing. And then once it's done, I'm going to connect to my server. I already made myself admin, so we should be ready to run through the setup. So here we are connected to our server. I am already admin. So let's open up the control panel or carbon panel by doing slash C panel. And here we can run through the setup wizard. So let's click on getting started. It's auto updating. So you don't need to restart your Rust server when a new build comes out, which is really handy. It's quite a few versions ahead of Oxide. It's using C sharp 10 which is a lot newer than what Oxide is using, which has a lot of improvements and optimizations. There's some higher performance. For example, the way that hooks are loaded is different than Oxide and should also improve performance. Dynamic hooks we already covered and hopefully explained. Harmony is the framework that Carbon is running on, basically what is implemented by Facepunch. 
and it's using Harmony 2.0 and this introduces higher performance. So all in all, really nice improvements. Then let's go to the modules. There are several built-in modules. Let's take a look at the first one, which is the Gather Manager. There are several plugins called Gather Manager and this does exactly the same. This allows us to change how much we get from pickups and also from quarries, etc. It's currently disabled. We can click on config and here we can directly edit those settings. First of all, we can enable it up here and then we can make changes. So for example, this allows us to change the oven speed, the quarry, the excavator, and also pickup. So we can either do everything, so make everything double, or we can do it individually per item. So for example, if we only want double the hemp seeds, we can set to over here. There are two pages, so we can go next. And here we can also change the gather. And then once you made your changes, don't forget to click save over here. And you can see now this is enabled and you can also disable it again right here. Really, really interesting. And this is straight out of the box. I'm going to disable it for now. Let's go to stack manager. Once again, we get some information of what this does and then we can add it to the configuration. If you're going to give millions of wood, you don't want to keep the same stacks of a thousand because then your inventory would be full instantly with one hit. Here you can change those stacks. We can either do a global multiplier, so we can just do 10. Oh, well, not zero. We can just do 10 if we want to, and then all stacks will be 10 times bigger. We have some individual settings that we can turn on and off. And again, we can do this per category. You might want to do 10 times resources, but not 10 times something else. So you could, for example, set everything to 10, but then have a list to exclude certain items. I'm going to leave that disabled. We have built-in Vanish with some settings as well. We can set the minimum auth level. You can do this under the permissions. You can change the command. You can also automatically turn on God mode on Vanish. By default, there is no icon in the bottom. You can also set your own icon somewhere. Here you can set the URL of the picture you want to use that will display in the bottom left. And I think you can even change the position the anchor points directly from this menu and also the color. There's quite a bit of configuration straight out of the box. We have the moderation tools. This is a bundle of very helpful tools. We can also give access to this using permissions and we have some options for no give notices. And we also have some configurable options up here. Don't forget if you change anything to save. Optimizations. There's something called the circular network distance. I'm going to enable this. I won't be able to fully explain what this does. It, it used to be a separate plugin from CodeFling. This is now built inside of Carbon and this changes the network distance from a cube to a circle. And this supposedly optimizes the network. As you can tell, I am not fully able to explain how it works or what it does, <laughs> but I'm all for optimizations. So I'm going to enable this. There's a plugin browser built directly into Carbon. I will show this in a little bit. We can directly install and configure plugins from CodeFling and also from Umod. And there is a big chance that there are more websites or services coming in the future. This is enabled. We are going to leave this enabled. We also have a access list. I'm going to leave this disabled, but you can see here, we can set the permission needed and also a specific group. And you could, of course, use Tabex to move players to that group once they claim or purchase a package. They have a DRM module. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. And this is a way for server hosts to bind endpoints that deliver plugin information with respect to public and private keys. That's outside of the scope of my brain and also this tutorial. And then clicking on Finalize, once we ran through the setup wizard, this is our carbon panel. We're currently on the carbon tab and here we have a lot of general information and things we can change. We can see what kind of map we are running. If we're running a custom map, our name would display over here. And we can see some carbon related information, what version we're running. And also really interesting, we can see how many hooks are loaded. So currently there are only 67 out of 694 loaded. In the top right, we are saying that we are a modded server. You might be able to turn this off and move yourself to the vanilla servers. Make sure you don't install any plugins that alter the game experience for the players if you're running a vanilla server. So only use admin tools and make sure that the admin tools you are using are fine to use. We have some settings in regards to automatically updating external hooks. In the bottom left, we have a Archon or a console. So we can just do ENV time, for example, to change the time. 
or of course run any command you would normally run. Then next up, we have the players. We can see the online players and we can click on them and we have some information and also some actions. I can see the Steam ID, my IP address if I click on refill, my current position, rotation, I can kick and ban. I can also teleport myself to the player or teleport the player to me. I can look at the loot and I can also make them respawn. I have some inventory lock options so I can lock your complete inventory, just your belt or just what you're wearing, maybe for investigation purposes. I can send a private message. See here on the left. I can blind. I'm, I'm scared to click this because <laughs> maybe I cannot use the user interface anymore. Let's believe that it's working. If we go to the second page, we can set our health, thirst, hunger, uh, radiation level, and also bleeding. If you have offline players, this will also display over here. Next up, we have the permissions built in. We can either do players or groups. So if we go to player and click on my ID, we can see that I currently have no plugins installed. If you have plugins installed, all the plugins will be over here. If we go to groups, we can add a new group. We can create a group directly from inside of the panel. If we select a group, we can also edit the group so we can make it a parent of a different group. There's quite a lot of configuration that you can do. You can also duplicate groups and this is all straight from the module. Here we can see the different modules that are enabled and we can also enable them directly from here. Going to plugins, we can see currently locally there are no plugins. We can select CodeFling at the top. Here we can see all the CodeFling plugins. We can also log in. So if we click log in here at the top left, I'm going to go to codefling.com slash auth, or I could just scan the QR code. And then I'm going to copy my code. Hopefully that works. Let's give that a try. Let's go to codefling.com slash auth. Going to the link, clicking on the button, it sends us to codefling OAuth authorize. I logged in to my CodeFling account. I can say continue as voicebot, <laughs> which was my username set when I signed up. Let's click on continue. And now we need to enter the six digit code and I was able to successfully copy it. So let's click on submit. Your account is now linked with your Carbon server. Hey, so now in the top left, you can see here, I am logged in to my CodeFling account. On the right, I can now say owned. Here I can see all the paid plugins that I own. Let's click on boom and let's click on download and it will automatically download the plugin. You can see it is now done and installed. We can configure it directly from the panel as well. So you never have to leave the server, go inside of your folders, config file, and then configure the plugin that way. This should automatically give you a graphical user interface for any configuration file. So let's go back and let's go to UMOD. Here at the bottom right, we have some tags. So for example, if we go building, you can see here that anything marked as a building plugin will then show up. And we have several pages that we can go through. And we can also click on them and then we get more information. If we look for admin radar and click on download, I know this has a lot of different permissions and configuration options, yeah. So here, for example, we have 12 different pages of things we can toggle and configure. And you can see we automatically get all those options here in a nice graphical user interface. So if you are not a big fan of editing actual config files, this might be a reason on its own to switch to Carbon. I find this really, really interesting. Once again, we can go to plugins and local, we can see exactly what is installed if we don't have any filters on. And as you can see, we can also directly uninstall from the panel. Just this on its own, the whole configuration straight from inside of the panel and having a graphical user interface. It is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Some people really prefer going straight into the scripts and just being able to quickly type things out. But I know a lot of people really don't like that and prefer having a graphical user interface that they can just click on and set things. I'm really excited where Carbon is going and it already has so many quality of life improvements that just improves the whole experience of being a Rust server owner. Hopefully in the future we can dive into more specific Carbon things. I would love to talk about the Carbon client and maybe talk about some of the things that are only possible in Carbon and not inside of Oxide. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will also link to the Carbon Discord. Once again, they are very active and eager to help. And if you have any issues to find solutions. If you're not done watching yet, you can click here on the right for our latest release or on the left for something that we think suits you best. 
If you think I want even more, of course, feel free to subscribe. This way you will be notified when we release new content every Friday. And as always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tebex store.